everybody. Uh, it's December 30th and we've only got like a day and a half before the new year slash new decade begins. And I just wanted to check in with you and kind of talk to you about my 2019 and my 2020. I know I've been talking a lot. If you heard the last, um, my first vlog, it was all about goal setting and um, doing a year end review so that you could figure out where you've been so that you can figure out where you're going. Um, but I wanted to kind of take a little chat before the end of the year and let you know um, a little about, about what I learned. So it's been an interesting year. Um, if you haven't been following or you're new, uh, I have become an empty nester in the last year and a half. And just over a year ago, my husband and I decided we would kind of uproot ourselves from our community in San Diego and move to Northern Baja, just across the border. I mean, I get back and forth quite often, um, but I did find that because I am across the border, it removed myself, I removed myself from my community. Um, I've had a great community conversation because of social media, clearly. I mean, I can still keep in touch with friends, know what's going on in their lives, and they know somewhat what's going on in my life, you know, and I still have clients and I still am taking on um, work, but I did scale back significantly, um, you know, and there were kind of some, some conversations in my own head about my purpose. You know, when your, your kids leave and you've spent so many years of your life really identifying as a mom and that kind of being your main focus, you know, you, you're not always sure what that's going to lead to when you come across that period of time where you go, okay, I don't have to do anything for the kids. I'm not chauffeuring them back and forth between place to place or, you know, um, I'm not having to check up on them. I'm not uh, worried about where they are. Well, I'm still worried all the time, but you know, I'm not necessarily trying to um, not get any sleep because I'm constantly thinking, oh my gosh, where is my kid? And did they make it home in time for curfew? You know, or cooking meals or blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, it's been an interesting year with that. My eldest daughter just a few weeks ago graduated from Cal Poly and is now on her trajectory for her brand new adventure in life and career. My other daughter spent a semester in uh, Barcelona, came home and uh, decided Los Angeles was the place for her. So she's there and I'm here and I see the kids, um, you know, but that's not my main focus anymore. So I kind of pivoted a little bit and so far, so good. I think I managed it pretty well. I still miss them and I maybe guilt trip them a little bit every once in a while and just tell them I miss you so much. You've got to come home and see your mama. Um, but for the most part, I didn't, I don't think I fell into a trap where I only believed my entire identity was my children. And that was really healthy for me. It was really healthy for my husband. It was really healthy for my kids. Um, and I'm really happy that that's what I discovered during this last year. Now, being away from your community and uprooting yourselves and completely isolating yourself in a new one to where you have to rebuild um, new relationships or try really hard to hold on to others is difficult. It was not easy, um, but I adjusted. And I think that that's the important part here. You know, we all learn to adjust with what, you know, we're really adaptable animals, you know, human beings. So, I, you know, I, I wasn't positive. I wasn't sure. I took a risk. Um, I'm down here. I really learned um, a lot about myself while I was here. And I think that that was the most valuable thing is that I had that time to sort of reflect. I still don't entirely know exactly what I want out of my life. We know, you know, when do we ever? We're still hesitant on some, on some things, even though we can do all the exercises in the world, like year-end reviews and planning for 2020. And those are living documents for us that we can change and master. But who knows? Things change. And that's what I've learned to kind of accept over this last year. Life is fluid. And um, for me, uh, some of my biggest lessons of the year was one, saying no and finding value in my expertise and in myself. Um, and what I mean by that is for many, many years, if someone needed help with any kind of project, whether it was, you know, 
in life or business, I hated saying no. And you know what this did? This took up a lot of time for me in my business where I was doing things for either one, being underpaid for what I know my expertise is worth, two, being undervalued because I was not charging enough to clients to where they actually felt like um, they needed to utilize my expertise properly. Um, so then I was trying to make up for uh, some of the not so good fits of a client um, with my, you know, with my services by, uh, by doing more than I, I needed to because it really wasn't it wasn't a good fit in the first place. You know, I think we all do that at some point in some time. Or I was spreading myself too thin with things that weren't necessarily my expertise or it wasn't what I wanted and loved to do anymore. Um, you know, I decided I needed to take a hiatus from that type of saying yes all the time. And I think I did a pretty good job. I'm, I, you know, I, I, definitely, uh, I definitely focus on what are... Uh, things that are worth my time and someone else's so that everyone gets what they need out of um, a decision for me to either take a client on or not take a client or sort of back away from one that doesn't necessarily know what they want. And clients don't always know what they want, so you have to be really careful with that. Um, and sometimes they don't even want to be told what it is that they need even though they're paying you. I mean, have you ever had one of those clients that just kind of fight you on everything or, um, you know, just they want you to accomplish something, but you need a give and take of communication and it doesn't happen? Well, let me tell you, I've had that several times. And this year I said, that's enough. I won't do that anymore um, because it was just a waste of time for everyone. Uh, you know, the other thing I discovered was I, I understand that there are things that I need to focus on. But I also need to forgive myself when I can't give 100%. When life comes into play and I can't fulfill my perfection, you know, my perfection list as I call it, um, because, you know, because there are so many things going on. So forgiving myself for things and not beating myself up has really been another big one. Um, I think I kind of just decided Whatever lessons I learn from them, I take them, I pack them up, I take them with me, and I keep moving forward. So in 2020, I'm going to try and remember these things, and of course I'm sure that it won't be perfect, um, which is fine. I'm all right with that. But I have rediscovered that not only do I love uh, what I do with helping hesitant entrepreneurs like take the next step to get to where they need to get to, or ease their way into this crazy journey, um, you know, or, you know, personal development and personal branding being um, such a passion of mine because I know it can be difficult. Um, but I have kind of gone backwards and thought about where I want to go to next. And I may be taking on some different paths and things. And that's been a true revelation for me. And I know that sometimes we get told and bombarded on a lot of these sites where it says niche, 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 you've got to, got a niche. Well, I understand the reasoning behind that, but you know what? There's also the fact that we as human are dynamic beings and we love to explore. And sometimes you being a, what, what I've heard the term multi-passionary um, is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You can be, someone who really, really enjoys several things. And yes, you can be an expert in more than one thing. It totally happens a lot. And, you know, I don't feel like we should be demonized for, uh, for believing in that. So, you know, if you're one of those people that has a great talent in many different things and you love it and you love to learn and you love to explore, don't let anybody take away your thunder when you decide you want to do a few other things also because they interest you. You've got one life to live. You might as well live it to the absolute best. Like I always say, you know, I'm here and we're all here to kind of work on our very best legacy. And I hope you're doing exactly just that. So there's my 10 minutes before the end of the year. I hope that you are able to find some clarity also and take a look at what you want to be doing in 2020 and not let anything get in your way. So 
We will chat very, very soon. I promise it was going to be a nice, smooth transition into the new year as long as you put some thought and effort into it. But don't beat yourself up to it when it can't be perfect. All right. Happy New Year. I'll see you in 2020.